Hi, my name is Michael Adusi. I'm the oboe professor at Tennessee Tech. I'm presenting a series of videos uh, to help you get started on the oboe if you're switching to it for the first time or, or starting it for the first time. This is the second video we're going to talk about breathing and embouchure. Uh, the first video talked about basic care of the instrument and how to hold it and that sort of thing. I have my email address here. Please contact me anytime if I can help you with the oboe. I'm happy to meet with you in person or uh, to do a video conference and I can give you some tips. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is talk about breathing uh, to play the instrument. If you play an, an, another wind instrument and you're switching to the oboe, it's, it's very similar. There's just some things to think about. So with the, with the oboe, what makes it different from other instruments is we're not using that much air. Um, so you have to be careful not to tank up. Like if you play the tuba or something, you're used to filling up with air and then you blow it all out and you have to fill up right away. Uh, with, on the oboe, you could take a big breath, but then it's not very much air actually leaving the instrument. So we never want to take a full breath. I try to breathe like half of my lung capacity. Otherwise we get full and then there's nothing to do. The oboe is one of the only instruments where you have to actually plan on breathing out sometimes. So in my music sometimes I write uh, you know, a breath mark, but I would say O oh, for out and I for in. I have to plan that out. Sometimes the trumpet has to do that, but most other instruments don't worry about breathing out. We get full of bad air and we need to let it out. Okay, so first advice is only breathe halfway. Next advice is I want you to pretend that your lungs are actually in your stomach. Uh, when I take a breath to play the oboe, I'm going to keep my shoulders down. Don't breathe with your shoulders. And I'm going to try not to expand my rib cage. I'm actually going to try to expand my stomach and stick my stomach out a little bit. So I take a breath in like this. If you want to practice with me, put your hand on your stomach. You can put another hand on your chest and take a breath and try not to <gasps> fill up up here in that kind of gasping sound. So it's a quiet breath and I'm expanding my stomach outward. So we're gonna use your abdominal muscles to push in on the rest of your body and that's gonna push up on your lungs and out. Okay, so you don't need to worry about your diaphragm. The diaphragm's not really helping you that much here. We're using bigger muscles to take these breaths. So take a, take a breath with me. No motion of the rib cage. And then to exhale, you're gonna push in and up on your stomach. And that is going to put pressure up on your lungs and that's going to force the air out of your body. Try not to exhale with your rib cage <sighs> like that. It's very, very uncomfortable. And it's going to sound like I just sounded. So I'm going to take a breath in and then I'm going to blow out by pushing very firmly inward with my, with my abdominal muscles, my stomach muscles. And we're not using the upper rib cage muscles at all. And you notice that was a very fast stream of air. So that's actually how much air pressure you need to play this instrument. If you're going, you're going to, first of all, your reed probably won't vibrate and you won't have any sound. And if you do, you're going to be very flat. Your intonation is going to be very flat. So we need a firm, well-supported stream of air. Okay, so that's the, the basic mechanics of breathing in and out. And uh, then we want to talk about the embouchure, which is the shape and the action of your mouth while you play the instrument. Okay, so in a mirror, in front of a mirror, say the word moo and hold it out. Moo. Notice what happens. The corners of your mouth, moo, are drawn in towards the middle. That is the most important thing about playing the oboe. Don't let your mouth spread out to the side like this. If you have this smile, it's going to distort your sound, and I'll show you that in a minute. So to form your embouchure, the corners of your mouth need to push into the middle, and then you're going to roll your lips in so that they cover your teeth. Now, I don't want you to take your entire lip into your mouth like that. I want to see about half of the red part of your lip on both sides. It's like you're just setting everything very small in the middle. And if you notice, when I do that, I'm going to get close to the camera now. When I do that, my chin flattens out. So you can actually see the musc muscular action here. I'm pulling my chin muscle down. I'm coming into the side. Moo. If you can whistle, as you start to get higher 
it's going to give you the perfect shape. And then you just need to roll your lips in on top of that. You can also think about drinking out of a straw, like a very thick milkshake. I use my finger to pretend. If you're trying to really suck through that straw, that's going to pull everything into the perfect shape. Okay, so we don't spread outward. We don't want to clamp down with, with your jaw. So I like to think that I have space in between my teeth, like a sideways thumb. Mm -hmm. So your lips are cushioning and surrounding the reed on all sides, but there's airspace between your teeth. That's gonna keep you having a nice warm, dark sound. If you get your teeth up close to the reed and you start biting down, it's gonna become more brittle. Okay, so let me demonstrate. We wanna start practicing on the reed only. The reed has two or three parts depending on who made it. So I'm going to shine a light through it. Okay, so the thinnest part is the tip up here and then the thickest part is the heart in the middle. And back here, depending on your reed, you may or may not have a thinner part back here that's called the back. So this heart, the thickest part right behind the very thin tip, that's where we want our lips to go. So in general, if you think about staying on the tip of the reed as much as you can, that's going to be a good rule of thumb. So what I actually do is I rest the reed on my bottom lip right at the tip and then I'm going to roll in and set my embouchure. I am staying as close to the tip as I can. It looks, when I play, it looks like I've got the whole thing in my mouth, but I haven't. If my lips are here and I'm tucking the reed in, and that's different from shoving it all the way in. If you play with your lips all the way up here, it's going to sound really bad. If you play all the way at the tip, it's going to sound fuzzy. So put your lips on the heart and try not to let the reed slide in. So work on this in front of a mirror. Say moo until you can get a nice, round, narrow shape. I'm going to work on rolling in. So you can see I have about half of my the red part of my lip showing. Okay, then I'm going to take a breath, and your first goal is to play any note on the reed, but hold it out as long as you can. And when you're just starting out at this, it's going to wobble like crazy. It's going to be loud and soft, and the note's going to go up and down. Okay, so your first challenge is to be able to play for 10 seconds without any change in the note that you're playing or how loud it is. Just a pure, clean sound. So your reed may not make the same pitch as mine, and that's okay. Once you can do that, then I would try changing note. So you noticed if I, if I tuck the reed in slightly, the pitch went up. If I kick the reed out of my mouth, the pitch went down. Also, if I open and close my mouth, right? So this is a very flexible instrument and you have to learn control. That's the number one thing for success on the oboe. You are controlling the reed and making it do what you want. Notice though, when you play on the reed, you get a lot more motion here than we do on the instrument. Okay, so once you can hold out a steady pitch on the reed and you can change pitch on the reed, then it's time to try to play on the oboe. And your first notes are going to be B, A, and G in the treble clef staff. So what we're going to do is just play the natural scale of the oboe. B is just the first finger, and A is 1 and 2. G is 1, 2, 3. So let's start with that B. Take a good breath, only halfway. Use your stomach muscles, not your chest. Form your embouchure. So notice again, I have the reed setting on my lip and I guide it into the mouth. If you try to stick it into your mouth without guidance, you're going to break the tip. And, and I often will do that right before a solo. Really important moment, and I'll smash my reed on my teeth. So you've got to be really aware of the space that you're in. And this reed needs to be either in your mouth, on the oboe while you're playing it, or in your mouth or in the case. Be really careful about when you have rests and you put your instrument in your lap and your reed is sticking over here. The person sitting next to you probably plays the flute. Uh, or the clarinet, and they don't understand how careful you have to be, and they're going to break it. And if you go up to get a drink of water, and you set your instrument in the chair, you've got to take the reed out. 
and don't put it on the stand because someone will come by and knock the music down and break your reed and then you're very, very sad. So these things are not cheap, right? Um, you'll find out, and your parents too. So uh, eventually, but by the way, if you continue studying long enough, you have the option to learn to make reeds yourself, which can be very useful. Um, but for now, you're buying them, and you don't want to buy them because the flute player next to you broke your reed. So be real careful with it. Okay, so always rest it on the lip and guide it into your mouth. Now, I'm going to play B. And again, my goal should be to have the same loudness and no change in intonation. So I'm gonna, these are called long tones. So play it uh, 10, 12, 20 seconds. Your lips will start to get tired and shake. Stop and rest. Try again. Then try A. And then G. There's so much to think about just in playing those three notes. In terms of control and stability, you're pressing very firmly. Remember, it's a fast, cold stream of air, um, not a slow. So let me show you some, some uh, incorrect approaches. So if I'm not blowing with a fast, cold stream of air, if I'm going, here's what I'll get. This is B. Here's what it should sound like. Now here's too slow air pressure. It's not necessarily softer, but it's flat and it sounds unsupported and just kind of hollow and, and, and wrong. Okay, so if I increase my airspeed, suddenly it sits right up where it needs to be. So if you find that you're really flat and you're not keeping up with the other members of your band, I want you to make sure that you are blowing firmly. Second thing, if I'm flat, could be that my mouth is too open. So I'm going to play with good air, but open my jaw too much. So it has kind of a squawking sound. So I'm going to close my teeth a little bit. Now I'm going to close my teeth too far. So if I'm biting on the reed, it gets really soft. It gets thin sounding, and sometimes it tries to play an octave higher. So if you feel like this, you're blowing like crazy and no sound is coming out, you're probably squeezing the reed shut. Okay, so remember, I want you to be able to fit your thumb between your teeth while you're playing. So once you can play a B, an A, and a G, then we need to start changing note. And it's very important that you don't stop blowing just because you're moving your finger. So try not to treat every note as an individual event. Uh, for the oboe to be successful, you have to be blowing firmly the whole time. So imagine that this is your air, it's unchanging, and I'm just saying here's B, here's A, here's G, but I'm not stopping my air in between. Okay, nice and connected, no bumps, no gaps, no blips in the sound. That should be your, your goal. As a, as a beginner who's starting out on this instrument and really work on that. I know it's not super exciting, but if you don't have these fundamental controls in place, it's gonna be hard for you to sound good later on down the road. Okay, then once you can have those three notes, keep going down. F sharp is the next one, E and D. What you'll, what you'll find is as you go lower on the oboe, you're gonna to have to drop your jaw uh, to create more resonant space. Then when you come back up, you'll have to close it down again. So watch right here as I play down the scale and back up. So maybe you didn't notice too much change as I went down because I'm already starting pretty open. But you probably noticed as I came back up the scale, I did tighten up a little bit. Okay, so it's small controls, right? Not huge changes. I'm going to play, just to demonstrate to you, a two octave C major scale. So if this were a treble clef from down here all the way up to here. And I just want you, I'm going to do it actually pretty fast. And I want you to watch what's going on with my lip. Notice that as I go higher, I'm drawing the reed in, but I am not shoving it in. My lips stay in the same place. And I'm going to use a lot more air as I go up to the top. And as I go downward, I'm going to open up. So let me start at the bottom. 
So here's the reed is here. And I, I have a lot of space between my teeth. So as I go up the scale, I've already started to close a little bit. And you can see that when I got to the top, I'm a lot more firm in my support of the reed. My teeth are still not very closed. I have closed my jaw a little, but that's not the main thing. And I've drawn the reed in. Let me go up and down. And I'll come closer. So you should have seen, as I got right about here on the staff, I really started to draw the reed in. And then as I got towards the bottom of the scale, I really opened my jaw. Okay, so you want to practice individual notes until you feel good about them, and then practice changing notes and take note of what you need to do. But overall, we try not to bite down and don't play the oboe with your jaw. The most important part of this instrument is having enough air support. So one more reminder. That's how fast I'm blowing. Let me show you. This is when I play loud. That's how hard I was blowing. Now I'm going to play soft. Still blowing really hard. Okay, so you work on that. That will set you up to be successful. So in the next video, we'll talk about what to do with your tongue and how we use articulation.